Hello, fellows. Welcome to the Commish Picks <clears throat> for the final week of the regular season. Uh, this has been quite the journey to get here. Um, we've all had some ups and downs, some of us more ups than downs, some of us more downs than ups, um, but we've gotten here. We've gotten to the uh, end of the regular season, and we have some huge, huge weeks uh, games coming up this week, um, and we have some big decisions as a league. Um, I think I like this idea that Adam put forward of dropping our rosters down to something like 20... 20 to 25 players and then having a supplemental draft. So we'll have a rookie draft, rookies only, um, right after the NFL draft. And then we could set our taxis and then drop our active roster, non-taxi rosters down, maybe by, um, you know, like week two of the preseason, uh, maybe week three of the preseason. We'd have to do a forced drop to 22 and then or to 20 or 25 or something and then do a supplemental draft so i think that's a good idea i like this idea um it does cre create more fluidity like adam said you're not going to lose your best players so you're not being punished for having a good um initial draft uh which is important in a dynasty it is important to do that initial draft right otherwise you do get into trouble um you know i think people forget though um, how quickly the NFL turns over, especially at certain key positions. And, um, I mean, I'm looking at two really good running backs for me this season. One has been the season, the, the league for one year and one is a rookie. So, um, you know, especially at the running back position, that's where you get, uh, more turnover. Um, kind of a reason maybe not to always hold on to, your elite running back, if this is year four or five of that guy being elite, that might be something to start looking at trade offers for. Uh, maybe not just hold on to them because they've been good for you. I know that we're looking at some players this year who seem to be just falling off a cliff um, in terms of their production. Um, players that maybe maybe are a worry for certain players. We are in a good heyday of running backs. We're now there's some good run, young running backs. Um, that's kind of the fantasy... Um, return to running backs the last few seasons where there was the big quarterback or wide receiver push for a while there so um anyways not going to get too much into strategy right now i'm going to start talking about our games which are huge this week there uh, this is such a good week of uh matchups in our league um not every score is projected as being close but the implications are huge across the board there's only like one or two games sorry i got something in the old eye here i might be getting a little visitor here one of our helpers is coming in i made a Brought a little pumpkin pie to work today, and I, I'm having a teacher that's requested some is having a helper come deliver it for her, so she may be coming in, so I may, I may be distracted for a second. Um, but let's jump into this very pivotal, very, very big week. And the game I'm going to start with is a very good game. Uh, it was between Mark and I. I consider this for game of the week just because of the, the seemingly competitive nature of the game. God, there's just something in my eye. Sorry, dudes. Um, all right, Mark and I are, are very, very tightly locked in this matchup. Um, I am 9-3. and three. He is 7-5. and five. Uh, I am currently projected at 175 points. Mark is currently projected at 173 points. So this is a very, very close uh, matchup. Um, and there's, there's just a couple keys to me in this game. Well, I mean, every when it's this close... And both teams are expected to score uh, a good a number of points. Every matchup is important down the roster. But I'm looking at Chris Godwin versus Michael Thomas. Chris Godwin, definitely. I was excited about getting Chris Godwin when I got him um, late in the draft. I think that was, that was something I was targeting. I was like, I want Chris Godwin. <clears throat> I don't know that he'll be a uh, priority for a lot of people. And the dude has just been unbelievable um, for a guy drafted as late as I got him. Um... Michael Thomas, on the other hand, spent some of this year with it was highly drafted. Spent some of this year without Drew Brees. Um, maybe that would have caused people to expect his numbers to go down. But he has been absolutely incredible as well. I think he's the top fantasy wide receiver this year, despite losing Drew Brees for a portion of the year, which is amazing in its own. So you got Chris Godwin projected at 17 points. I do. Uh, Mark has Michael Thomas projected at 23.9 points. Um, very, very uh, not not a close. I mean, that's a six point spread. But I would think that the way Chris Godwin has been scoring, 
Uh, I'm excited about that matchup. I think that if Chris Godwin wins that, if he can beat Michael Thomas, uh, I win this game. You know, I think that will be – that's definitely sure. If Chris Godwin can beat Michael Thomas, I win this game. Um, I don't think I need him to. I think I need him just to be competitive with Michael Thomas. But if he wins, I win. Um, Saquon Barkley against Green Bay for me, uh, that's a pretty good matchup. Green Bay's defense has given up the running yards this year at times. Um, pretty consistently, actually. And Mark Ingram against the San Francisco defense for Mark. Um, man, that uh, if you have a piece of that Baltimore offense, you're happy right now. Uh, and I guess, I'm not sure. I believe in the San Francisco defense. I believe in the Niners. But that's a they're only have marking and projected at 16 points there. And he's been doing really well. Um, so that's a key for me. That's a key is that that running back matchup, Saquon versus Mark Ingram, seems like an automatic win for Saquon. But he's been playing kind of like crap. The offensive line is crap. And he hasn't been getting very many points the last few weeks. So I need him to win that. I can't have Mark Ingram win that and have me win. So... I think if Chris Godwin wins the matchup against Michael Thomas, I, I win. And if Mark Ingram wins the matchup against Saquon Barkley, then Mark wins. Um, neither of us need those wins to happen, but if they do, then I think we win. So if Chris Godwin beats Michael Thomas and Mark Ingram beats Saquon, then you know we'll kind of go back to the drawing board um, a little bit. But those are those are some swing matchups for me in this game, and I am picking myself to win because I it's the last week of the regular season. I got to get this victory. I want that first round by. I don't want to play some dangerous team, probably like a uh, Burt or. Um, it might be Mark again, honestly, uh, in the first round. It could be it could be a Daryl, or I mean a Sean. It could be a uh, JD. The dangerous teams that could be lurking around that first round. I want I don't want a part of that right now. I want that first round by. I want to be in the semifinals. So uh, I'm picking myself to seal up that first round by get to double digit wins, which I'd be stoked about, very happy about. Possibly tie Steve. Um, it would be looking like for record. Um, he would still have the points advantage for, over me, but I would love to be in that position, tied for first place with a point differential being the, the tiebreaker there. Okay, next game. Another huge game. Daryl versus Sean. A lot hinges on this game. Um, because of another pick I, I will be making later, Daryl has to beat Sean for Daryl and JD to have a chance. If Daryl doesn't beat Sean... I don't think that either of them have a chance. I think that, um, I mean, they still would. They still have a chance. There's one other situation where they could get in. But Daryl needs to beat Sean uh, for them to feel at all like there's a chance, I feel like, I think. So right now, Daryl 5-7, and seven, Sean at 6-6. Six and six. Daryl is projected for 171 and a half, and Sean is projected for 155 and a quarter. Um, I'm having some flashbacks. I don't know. I feel like I'm having some deja vu here, and I'm not really sure why. Um, maybe back to their earlier game. There's just something about looking at this paper right now. I feel like I've done this pick before. Um, I know I've picked be the, between these two before, but this is some serious deja vu right now. So um, here's the deal with this game. Daryl is projected to win by 16 points. Uh, I am picking him to win that game and keep the door open for Daryl and JD to get in, Daryl or JD to get in. Um, but the problem with this game right now is that they've got Mahomes projected for 30 points, which is fine. Uh, that that's whatever okay. okay Mahomes gets his 30 but the key matchup here is Carson Wentz versus the Miami defense the Eagles offense has not been great um, but if you're going to get right against somebody you, it's the Miami defense and they've got Wentz projected for 23 points if there is any way that Wentz beats Mahomes here in this one-on-one -on -one matchup uh, I think that Sean could pull the upset here, which, um, you know, he is the underdog right now, even though he has a better record. Uh, Wentz beats Mahomes, there is a – then I think Sean pulls this upset. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but play, Wentz playing against Miami certainly gives more of a chance. Uh, and I th find this very interesting. The running back matchup uh, is, is very even here. You got uh, Aaron Jones and Daryl Montgomery. David Montgomery, Daryl Montgomery is the owner. David Montgomery is the runner. You've got those two, a uh, little NFC North action there. Again, Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb. <clears throat> uh, Jones and Montgomery are projected for 36 points, and Sonny and Chubb are 
uh, projected for 35 points. So a very close running back matchup, which again tosses it back to the quarterbacks. I feel like um, you also have you've got Daryl Montgomery. Oh my goodness gracious, David Montgomery going against Detroit um, and Lord of Mercy. Who is Green Bay playing? Um, I don't remember who Green Bay is playing right now, but uh, it's it's a decent matchup for Aaron Jones. And oh, I already said this. Did I already? Yeah, Saquon. They're playing the New York Giants. So Aaron Jones is playing the New York Giants, and uh, David Montgomery is playing the Detroit Lions. So you can get some yardage against those teams. Um, the Patriots, Sony Michelle, they're playing against Houston, another team you can run on. And the Browns are playing, I don't even know who they're playing right now. I should have looked that up. But uh, they, it's a very even projection for those running backs. So I think the difference will come down to the, the quarterback duel there. And I'm picking Daryl. Daryl for the win. Uh, give himself and JD a fighter's, a puncher's chance here. All right. Next game, JD versus Adam. Not as important because I don't, it's not gonna, I don't think it'll be close. Right now, JD is a 5'7, Adam's a 2 and 10. The projection's 173 to 128 in favor of JD. Uh, JD has a huge flex advantage here. His flex players are projected at 34 points. Adam's are projected at 11. Um, so I'm picking JD to win that uh, walking away. And I think he puts himself in position to capitalize if Sean uh, or Bert lose. JD is putting himself in a very strong position there. Daryl has to have Sean and Bert both lose. Um, if either one of them wins, Daryl is pretty much out. But And uh, JD has to beat Adam um, to sneak into that sixth spot. So uh, very important that JD wins. I think he will. I'm projecting he will. I'm not surprised you know, to anyone. Uh, next game, Phil versus Lucas. Uh, nothing on the line here whatsoever. Lucas is in. Phil is out. Uh, F- Lucas is eight and four. Phil is two and ten. Uh, it's projected one forty four to one eighty two in Lucas's favor. Um, just an idea of the talent disparity, or the really the opportunity disparity. Um, Phil is rolling out Alvin Kamara, great. Um, Kalen Balaj, not, and Cream Hunt still getting there. Uh, versus Lucas, who's right now rolling out Lev Bell. Christian McCaffrey and Leonard Fournette. Now, at the beginning of the year, I would have had questions about Lev Bell, but still not been able to deny the talent. Uh, Stoked on Christian McCaffrey. I honestly considered him where I picked Saquon Barkley. Um, But he's even surpassed everything I thought he could do. And I was not a believer anymore of Leonard Fournette, and you have to be now. I, uh, I don't know how much longer this guy can hold up, those injuries are gonna gonna happen again. It's it's just a matter of time. But until they happen, God damn, he's he's playing some good football and um, getting points for for Lucas. So this is a big win for Lucas. Um, maybe more than the spread of uh, 30, 38 points that shows up on here. So Lucas gets the win, goes to nine and four, and puts that pressure on me to beat Mark. Um, Mark can do a big favor to Lucas if Mark can beat me. Um, you know, we got some some dudes helping some dudes out here. If Mark can beat me, he helps Lu- Lucas get that first round by as long as Lucas can win. And I don't see Lucas losing this game. So I got to beat Mark to get that first round by. Um, and then Daryl can really help out JD by beating Sean. Daryl has to beat Sean for JD to get in. And the next game would allow would be the key to both of them getting in. And the next game is Burt versus Steve, the game of the week. A 6-6 six six team against a 10-2 and two team doesn't always sound like a game of the week. But when you're looking at the fact that currently Burt is sitting in fifth place, uh, one of the last two teams in, trying to fight in their way into the playoffs. As we know, we've got four teams set. Uh, Steve, me, Mark, and Lucas. And then we're looking at needing two more. And that is either going to be, it's going to be one of, uh, Bert, or two of Burt, Sean, Steve, or uh, JD, and Daryl. Okay, one, two of those four are getting in. And for JD and uh, Daryl to have a chance, Daryl has to beat Sean. And then for both of them to have a chance, Bert has to beat Steve as well. Um, if Bert beats Steve, uh, sorry, if Steve, good Lord, if uh, Daryl beats Sean and Bert beats Steve, then. I believe it will be 
Bert and JD getting in. If if Daryl beats Sean and Steve beats Bert, it's looking like it could very much be JD and Daryl. It could also be JD and Steve uh, Bert in that situation. Very fucking confusing. But all I know is for for JD and Daryl are rooting for JD and uh, for are rooting for Steve and Daryl this week. They are rooting for Steve and Daryl this week. Um, right now the spread is Bert one sixty nine to Steve one sixty five. Um, very close, very tight. The key for me in this game, two, uh, there's th- uh, four keys in this game, four. Uh, that's what makes this a game of the week. Number one, you got Deshaun Watson versus New England, okay? This is not like last week, Dak Prescott going into freezing, raining, cold uh, uh, Foxborough and playing the Patriots on their field. This is Deshaun Watson at home against the New England defense. So we're going to find out. Again, we're going to continue to find out, is this New England defense a product of their opponents, or can they give Steve the points needed for victory on an opponent's field in a uh, dome, and if, and if nothing else, an open dome, um, where it's going to be very comfortable for, the, for Deshaun Watson. Um, the second key is Cooper Cup versus Arizona for Burt. Cooper Cup has been... Uh, underperforming, underwhelming the last couple weeks. But again, just like with Miami, if you want to get right, you get right against Arizona or Miami. So Cooper Cup against Arizona is a a big opportunity for um, Burt. Deshaun Watson for New England is a must-have for Steve in terms of proving that this New England defense is not going to shut everyone out because... Uh, but here's the issue is that if Deshaun does that for, for Steve, he is also kind of hurting himself because Steve is playing the new England defense against Deshaun Watson. So I don't know if Steve's going to make a change there. I don't know if he's going to roll with that and be like, okay, I'm taking the points that one of these two is going to give me, or does he make a bet on which one he thinks? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if Steve makes a lineup move there. Um, or if he's willing to stick with having Deshaun Watson and the new England defense at the same time. Speaking of the New England defense versus Houston, Burt has the Bears defense versus Detroit. Um, the, now, Jeff Driscoll's beat up, and the, the, the Detroit Lions are starting undrafted uh, quarterback something blue, blau, bluff. I don't know. B-L-O-U-G-H. Bluff. Uh, <laughs> blau, blow. I don't know. It blows for them, that's for sure. And it's great for the Bears defense. Um, on tonight, tonight, Thanksgiving, you got happy fucking Thanksgiving, you guys. What the fuck is wrong with me? Oh my gosh. Happy Thanksgiving to my good friends, um, all over the world. Uh, I, I can't believe I didn't even start with that. I had some pumpkin pie already because I brought it to work for the, the, the people who are not, um, celebrating with us from work tonight and people who don't celebrate American Thanksgiving. I made a pumpkin pie and brought it into them. It was I, that has become my new specialty. Pumpkin pie has become my new uh, holiday specialty to make. I don't know what I do, but I know it's my favorite pumpkin pie I've ever made, and I'm am tooting my own horn there. But happy Thanksgiving, guys. So this Bears defense against Detroit is tonight. It is a tonight game. I get to watch this game at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Doha time, Arabic standard time. Um, and that's going to be a big, big, big game in this matchup. The Bears D against Detroit for Burt. With this third string quarterback, maybe, maybe the Bears will feast tonight. Maybe they're feasting on some Detroit turkey. We'll see. Detroit turkey legs. Um, they got uh, the Detroit. I mean, third string quarterback, carry on Johnson's down. Uh, all of us are throwing our baskets into Scarborough and Blow or whatever his name is. Backups on backups on backups. So it's time for the Bears. Bears going to do some some feasting tonight, I think, on Detroit, and that's going to help Bird a lot, uh, and therefore hurt JD and Daryl in there in one of them at least. Um, and then, but here's the here's the peacemaker for me. Here's the piece de resistance, whatever it is. The final key, and I am willing to make a bet on this one. Okay, you have George Kittle versus Travis Kelsey, two of the top three, it, probably the top two, really the top two tight ends in this league right now. Going in. Playing um, Kittle against Baltimore. Kelsey against somebody. <laughs> I don't know. It's out there somewhere. Uh, that is a huge, 
huge matchup. And I am willing to put a shot bet. If anyone wants to take me up on it, I'm not doing this against myself this time. But if someone wants to bet against me, Kittle versus Kelsey, winner of that game, winner of that matchup, the tight end battle, winner, winner, chicken dinner for this game. And I think it's going to be George Kittle. I think that uh, Jimmy G is going to be needing to throw that ball to a to a security blanket in this game. I don't think the San Francisco 49ers want to fuck around throwing, having him hold that ball too long. I, I They know what's on the other side of that field. They need to move the ball. Um, they need to give their their keep their offense on the field and keep Lamar Jackson off of it. And I feel like that's going to be a lot of George Kittle. I think he wins this matchup, and I think Burt wins this game, um, which sets up that one. Uh, if, by Burt winning, he is in. If Burt wins, he's in. If Sean wins, he's in. So Burt and Sean. I have Burt winning. I have Sean losing. That leaves JD or Daryl. One of them, one of them is gonna gonna be it. If if JD can't beat Adam, it'll be it'll be Daryl in my projections, and that's what we come down to, guys. Turkey Day, week thirteen, playoffs on the line for some of you guys. This is a huge weekend. Set your lineup smart, not with the heart, with your head. And happy hunting, happy Turkey Day. God bless you all. Love you all, uh, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. All right. Peace out.